Okay, Senator Johnson, thanks uh, for being here. I, I must say, uh, since you've come to the Senate and joined the committee, you've really been very faithful in attending our hearings, and as chairman, I appreciate it. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's, it's important work, so I'm, I'm glad to do it. Uh, Mr. Boris, it's, it's a pleasure to see you again and welcome your family. Uh, I would imagine you have a core team of managers, subordinates that, that work for you. Can, you. can you describe to me who those folks are and, and kind of what their function is and how you work with those? People? Uh, uh, yes, the uh, the core team uh, of the management directorate is comprised of the chief financial officer, the chief information officer, the chief procurement officer, the chief human capital officer, uh, the chief security officer, probably a couple of other chiefs there that sure. uh, are above blanking at the moment. Chief procurement officer, the chief human capital officer, chief financial officer, the, the chief security officer. That's okay. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's not a quiz. I, I just, I just want to <laughs> find out, you know, how, how you deal with those folks, I mean, in terms of their responsibilities. I mean, how, how far do you dig down into their functions? Well, uh, that's a great question, and, and I say I'm very, uh, it was very important upon my arrival to establish a collaborative working environment with my colleagues, with the chiefs of uh, the lines of businesses. One of the things that I've emphasized, particularly around management integration, is if we're going to promote management integration, we have to live an integrated management style. So I work very closely with the chiefs. I'm not a micromanager, but it's very important to convey priorities, to hold them accountable, to identify what are the priorities, what are the action items we're going to take. We meet weekly. Uh, we review progress. Uh, we have changed the way we communicate amongst ourselves. And, and Senator, I'll tell you why I think that's important. Uh, in the past, and there's always a tendency in these lines of businesses to communicate vertically, that is, to communicate uh, uh, from a line of business to the undersecretary, and you have a series of one-on-one -on -one conversations. What we have done is we communicate both vertically and horizontally. Any communication that comes to me from a chief, for example, my, my weekly reports, also goes to all the other lines of business chiefs. So we have complete transparency on the conversation that's taking place. So we don't have siloed conversations. We are living the experience of management integration. We address all management areas, whether it be a financial matter, an acquisition area, with all of the chiefs present. So this is part of my, my collaborative management style. It's the way that we demonstrate to the rest of the organization that we are all in this together. Uh, it's reflected positively by the components because they see that we address these issues together. Uh, so I think that's a direct result of my management style. Uh, the chiefs have responded very well to that. Uh, they communicate well with each other, and I'm very proud of the work that they do. Uh, we couldn't have had a management integration plan without all of the chiefs being involved and represented in this. And this plan is made up of every one of those functional areas, the chief financial officer, chief human capital officer, chief information officer, all of the chiefs. We are a true team. Are, the, are they members of the SES? Uh, yes, they are, Senator. Uh, we just recently held a, a hearing on the SES and, and the, the problems in, in recruiting uh, top managers in the government. Are, are you seeing similar types of problems, and, and what would those be? Well, I, I will tell you, Senator, right now we're seeing a tremendous amount of interest in the positions that we advertise at DHS. We're probably getting in excess for some positions a thousand resumes. People want to come to DHS. Now, not all a thousand may be specifically qualified for the positions they're applying for, but I take that as a very, very good sign. People are interested in coming to DHS. They recognize the good work that we're doing, and yes, it's making our job harder to look through uh, uh, the applications of very qualified individuals. But that is going to make us better as a department, and I think that's partly as a result of the leadership of the department, the very strong affinity for the mission, and the work. The work is very challenging. We are not having trouble attracting candidates. But that would be across the board at DHS. I'm, I'm particularly interested in, in hearing the, the problems of having uh, career government employees make the leap up to the SES uh, level. Well, one of the reasons why we focus so strong on consolidating these leadership uh, development programs in the department is to have a single way in which we train leaders so that the SES core has the mobility to be able to move among the between the components, between the components and headquarters. Uh, we want to facilitate that movement in the department. We want the leadership to be mobile and transparent. 
the consolidation and development of one single SES candidate development program, which we've just uh, finished a, a very extensive recruitment within the department. We had, quite frankly, it was a tremendous challenge to pick the first cohort of, uh, because there were so many applicants from within the department that want to be a part of the SES uh, program. So we're getting, again, Senator, great enthusiasm to come forward and do that. And, and I think it's a real tribute to the work that's being done at the department uh, and the leadership. So, so you're not seeing then a reluctance from uh, members, uh, you know, at the GS level into the SES? No, no, we're not. I am not seeing that, Senator. Oh, good. That, that's good news. Um, uh, Senator Lieberman asked you a question I had, I had to cross that off. So let, let me take a little bit different uh, ta uh, tack on that. Rather than the great surprise, what's the most important thing you've learned in your year, in your position? Well, I think the most important thing that I've learned, which is very much at the heart of, uh, of my approach and my style, is to engage, to interact with uh, the workforce, interact with the employees, with the leadership. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very active in getting out and understanding. I have a strong need to understand. For example, during the budget process, we spent a lot of time looking at investments on the border. Prior to the budget process, I went out and visited. I walked the border. I don't come from a border state. I wanted to better understand the issues at the border, but I wanted to talk to the men and women who work on the border, the Border Patrol agents, the field operation personnel, to understand their needs. What is it that they need from the organization to better do their job? It gave me some very important insight doing these kinds of things. I did the same thing with, with uh, ICE, the uh, same thing with Secret Service, with the Coast Guard, to better understand the operational side. So when we're looking at, for example, how we plan to bring in a thousand new Border Patrol agents as a result of, again, the fine money that we got from the Congress to support our border initiatives. I wanted to better understand from the men and women on the border, what was that going to mean to them? How were they going to be able to absorb a thousand Border Patrol agents? Not just what did the supervisors in Washington think, but what did the field superintendents think? What did the rank and file think? What was going to be the backroom support? What kind of support was going to be needed to be able to add a thousand additional agents. And I learned a lot from that. They articulated, first of all, they, they didn't see where we would have the space, the facilities to be able to put a thousand new people. They didn't feel that we had adequate administrative support to support a thousand new agents. These were very enlightening. These were very good. These, these were verifiable, quantifiable statements I learned from walking the field. And I was able then, in, during the budget process, to be able to quiz the Customs and Border Pro uh, Protection Agency, for example, on what they were doing, how they were looking at their management budget, how they were looking at their management administration of Border Patrol, and how that was going to reinforce the operational side, and whether or not they were going to be able to have the resources to support those additional agents. That's how I think it's important that the Undersecretary not just be a, a member of leadership and sit in Washington and manage, but understand the operational needs so that we can better support them. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks.